Which of the incarnations of Sherlock Holmes would you say is your favourite? The Robert Downey Jr. one, that punches people with his mind. Block Ferrell left. We can write draw. Now fracture. Sherlock Holmes is one of those fictional characters who's near instantaneously recognisable at a glance, due in part to his now iconic Deerstalker cap. A hat that pop culture would have you believe the great detective wore all the fucking time. However, according to the original short stories he appeared in, Sherlock Holmes never wore such a hat and wouldn't be caught dead in something that lame. So Sherlock Holmes was never written to wear a Deerstalker cap? No, in none of the original stories by Arthur Conan Doyle that Sherlock Holmes appears in, he is never once described as wearing a Deerstalker cap specifically. The closest you ever get is in a story called Silver Blaze, in which Watson describes um, Holmes as wearing his ear flat travelling cap when they're sat on a train together and he's just sat idly observing what he's doing. And the fact that Watson makes note of it kind of suggests that it's not something like, you know, Holmes wore all the time. And even though that description does sound quite like a deer soccer cap, it could very well be one of many other hats with those weird dangly ear flappy things. Yeah, the image I get is that one that Kyle wears in South Park. Well, the image I'm getting is those big Russian hats that people wear. Do you like the huge, big, fluffy Russian ones? I'm imagining that. And my image is cool, so that's what you photoshop in. <laughs> You gotta do actually no, let's let the audience decide. Photoshop Sherlock Holmes in Kyle's hat and then in a big dumb Russia hat. And we'll see which one looks better. And then just for a laugh, find one of those hats with a propeller on top and put in one of them. So let's want to see what that looks like. Now we'll think about it, what would be the dumbest hat Sherlock Holmes could wear? So we'll get into why the deer stalker cap is not something Holmes would ever wear, according to his characterization in the stories in a moment, but I'm just now thinking of him walking around wearing one of those hats with like the beer cans in the side. <laughs> well, instead, so apparently in the books, Holmes is like a huge drug addict. He's just fucking drugs directly into his face. He's just got them full of cocaine. He's <laughs> just constantly sniff. Instead of going into his mouth, he goes into his nose. And he just like, whenever he goes to invest, he's in a big old sniff. Now, imagine the cat in the hat. The one that's like really, really tall. No, no. Whenever he walks, it like wobbles. No, the Doug Dividend like. hat. <laughs> That one. You know, you can put the clip in. Everyone knows who Doug Dimmado is. He's got the largest, most white steps you've ever seen. It reaches the heavens. So this man cannot walk through doors, but that's okay, because he looks that swag. That's right, I'm Doug Dimmadome, owner of the Dimsdale Dimmadome and developer of Dimmadome Acres. So when you see the royal wedding and they always turn up with the biggest hat. We've got to talk about the Cthulhu hat, haven't we? I don't know which, I don't know which one of the royals it was, but at one of the royal weddings, I think it was, um, uh, William and um, Kate. Can we call her Kate? Is it Kate Middleton? Because that sounds a bit off, off for a royal, Kate. It's like Princess Kate from the council estate down in Leeds. But I don't know, but at the wedding of William and Kate, there was like this one woman who wore this weird hat that looked like, like Cthulhu-esque, like the giant flying spaghetti monster just stuck on her forehead. And it became like this huge ass meme where people were like, like, you cannot question the power of this woman. She's like the first member of the Cthulhu church. So it's never mentioned that that is a hat he wears. No. But why would it be a problem if he did wear it? Because in all of the stories in which Holmes' fashion sense is described in any manner, he's described as being in a acutely, you know, fashion conscious individual who struts the streets of London like they are like cobbled human shit covered catwalks. Like, that guy was styling and or profiling a majority of the time he spent awake. So why would it be a problem that he wore a deer stalker specifically? Like is that not a fashionable hat? Not really no, because the name suggests a deer stalker cap is something you wear while hunting, you know, outdoors in the countryside, not in the city when you're doing detective work. And Holmes being described as like, you know, a fashion conscious individual wouldn't commit such a heinous faux pas. And there's a knowing nod to this in the Benedict Cumberbatch series, where he wears a deer stalker cap in one episode to like sneak out of a theatre, a lot of press catch a picture of it, and then say, oh no, Holmes wears this hat all the time because he's weird, and he gets really pissed off about it. Why is it always the hat photograph? It's a deer stalker. Would you stalk a deer with a hat? You're gonna do throws. Want some death frisbee? Because the people writing that show did do some research and found out well, Holmes never wore a hat like this. Let's just put something in there for like, you know, Sherlock Holmes fans. Like, yeah, we know he didn't wear the hat. Holmes knows he didn't wear the hat, but no one else does. I thought you'd be wearing the hat, though. That wasn't my hat. I hardly recognise him without the hat. It wasn't my hat. They did a similar thing with uh, Watson and his moustache, didn't they? After Reichenbach, it's when Holmes returned and said, I don't like your moustache. So you shave it off. Shave it off immediately. Who's got that? Who takes that much stock of what their mate says? That's like a book. Isn't he married in that season? Yeah, he's married. But no, it's, I think it's after his wife then reveals she also doesn't like it. Oh, no. Mary likes it. No, she doesn't. She does. She doesn't. Oh, 
Brilliant. Why is everyone dunking on like, <laughs> like Watson's mustache? That's not fair. Like, he must have took ages to like groom and meticulously like, you know, maintain that. And then this dickhead boss comes back and goes, I don't like it. So I better shave it then. If you're fucking better, mate. It's like, oh man. You know what? Stop dunking on his mustache, man. He tried real hard. That's not fair. Do you reckon the mustache is part of the job description because he needs to twirl it as he's thinking? Well, yes. <laughs> yes, it is. That's why, why do you think he doesn't have a beard? Because obviously he'd rub it all off with all the chin stroking he's got to do. Fucking, do you know nothing about detective work? I, I have evidently done. There we go. Do your research, man. I did. As an aside for anyone curious about how Holmes is described, his outfits are rarely, if ever, commented upon unless he's in disguise. He is, however, described by Watson in the books as always being meticulously well-groomed, which is hardly a lot to go on for actors wanting to portray the detective on screen. What about his physical appearance, though? Holmes is generally described as being a serious-looking man with grey eyes, black hair, and a hooked, crooked nose. And his other distinguishing feature, if you can call it that, is that he's a little over six feet tall, which, again, not really a lot to go on for an actor playing him on stage. And a lot of people who were, like, you know, putting on Sherlock Holmes plays were acutely aware of the fact that most people reading the books, even if, like, you know, they read these descriptions, would have their own image of what Holmes looked like in their mind. Not to mention that all the drawings I mean, back then were in black and white, so everybody had grey eyes and black hair. So again, it's like, well, fuck me. How do we make this guy stand out on stage? This all changed, though, when an artist called Sidney Paggart came onto the scene and drew this image. So why did Paggart draw that image? It's because that image was supposed to go alongside the story of the Buscombe Valley mystery, in which Sherlock Holmes goes to the countryside. And Paget thought to himself, well, what would he wear in the countryside? Would we'll make him wear a deer stock cap? That's what people wear when they're out there. Also make him wear like an Inverness cape, or the Inverness pimp cape, to give it its full title. And the rest is history, because, like, that image ended up being so widely disseminated that Paget decided to make it Holmes' like, you know, standard attire for whenever he had to go outside of London to solve a crime. And because that was the most popular image of Holmes, other artists commissioned to draw Sherlock Holmes ate Paget's drawings and also drew Sherlock Holmes wearing the deerstalker cap, sometimes when he wasn't outside of London because they didn't realise why Paget did it, and so on and so on and so on. So eventually that became the defining image of the character. This isn't a deerstalker now, it's a Sherlock Holmes hat. So it appeared in a bunch of artworks. Yes. But what cemented that look in the minds of the people reading or watching plays or films? That was an actor called William Gillette who wore a deerstalker cap while portraying Holmes on stage. And nobody's really quite sure why he decided to wear the deerstalker cap, but the leading theory is that he wanted Holmes to be immediately recognisable from a distance whenever he appeared on stage, and the hat was a good way to do that. And he, that's the reason he also uh, adopted the really large, comically curved pipe. Because in all the stories, Holmes is described as smoking a straight pipe. But um, Gillette had one and found it really difficult to say his lines. So he said, oh, get me a curved pipe so I can just have that hanging out my mouth and deliver my lines at the same time. And that image became like, you know, the de facto one of Sherlock Holmes in the mind of the public. And obviously anyone else put on a play after that wore the same outfit because, well, that's what Sherlock Holmes looks like, even though in the books, he doesn't fucking look like that. And the rest, as they say, is history, and Sherlock Holmes is now, you know, forever going to be stuck wearing that stupid fucking hat he doesn't like. Sorry, dude, but you're not real and we are, so we tell you what to do. So in the books, is it not particularly defined how he dresses, like, at all? No, um, Sherlock Holmes is quite like a nebulously defined character. Um, which is why I think the stories were so popular, because obviously he can be whatever you want him to be. Like, say for the few like occasions where he's in costume or disguise, like what he looks like is never really described or talked about. So you can make Sherlock Holmes wear whatever the fuck you want in your mind. And um, the only real thing we have to go on is meticulously well groomed and immaculately dressed. And I imagine him just walking around like someone out of RuPaul's Drag Race. So we have that scene, don't we, in the Robert Downey Jr. movies where he dresses like a woman and he absolutely fucking canes it and he's walking and he owns that look. He's got the proper catwalk swagger as he does it. So I'm just imagining now that every day Holmes is walking about, he put on a more flamboyant and ridiculous outfit. <laughs> because you know what? He knows. No one's going to question it because I'm sure like fucking Holmes. And also, as we discussed in another video, he was rock fucking solid. Like, Sherlock Holmes is like a master martial artist in the original books, and he's strong enough to like bend a steel poker with minimal effort. 
and completely straighten it out after a guy three times his size, like, you know, forcibly bends it all up like, in two, like, in a fit of rage. So I'm just not imagining how just Sherlock Holmes just pimp walking down the street. Like, he is Saints Row 1S pimp walking everywhere with the cane like that. It's just two shots ahead and he starts blaring in the background. <laughs> oh, man. What, what other outfits do you think... Uh... This has got to be something super colourful. I was going to say a pimp outfit, but I think that's too obvious. No, but the thing is, the pimp outfit is such a strong fucking look. If a man's wearing a cape, he's pretty close to being... That could be a pimp cape. All you need to do is just lie in fur around the edge and you're sorted. Yeah, he needs to be wearing like a Squall-esque jacket from Final Fantasy VIII, like the Flex jacket. Like, do you know what... Have you heard the story about this? I haven't, no. In Final Fantasy VIII, which obviously came out after Final Fantasy VII, and one of the things they did with the main character Squall is they gave him a jacket with fur around the collar. Because they were told, you can't do that. It's impossible, there's no way you can make like fur look realistic on his jacket during the CG cutscenes. And one of the guys in charge went, no, fuck you, we can make the fur bigger. And they made the collar even bigger because they were told they can't. So I call it the flex jacket because it's there purely as a flex. Some people said, you can't do this. What, go on, let's go. Favourite jacket from fiction. I fucking love Squall's jacket. Favourite jacket? And I'm gonna put out there as well, Trunks's jacket. Because it's like, Trunks' jacket, right? I think he was the first time I've ever seen a character wear a jacket that just comes up to here. And that's like a thing now, is it the denim jacket where he doesn't go all the way down, you've got to wear a longer shirt underneath. The Trunks jacket, man. Or, I think I'm going to say like Dante's jacket from uh, Devil May Cry series. But I know I'm not cool enough to pull that off. Because you need to have just like untold amounts of swagger to pull off a floor length red leather jacket. Yeah, it's like Neo's jacket, isn't it? No one can pull off the look of a long black leather duster even though it's such a strong fucking look. It's like when I was playing Red Dead Redemption 2 and I made Arthur Morgan wear like the full length leather dust and I'm like, that looks so fucking cool, but I will never ever pull that look off because you need to be a grizzled like cowboy who's just willing to beat someone the fuck down to pull that shit off. One that I would like is like the pilot's jacket. It's like the leather one with sort of the fur. The bomber the jacket. Edges. Yeah. Oh, I'm so, f there's so many good jackets in fiction. You, you thought it was a stupid question. So you're like, oh God, wait. There are so many cool ass jackets, like even in just certain games. Like Devil May Cry Nero jacket, super cool. And did you hear that they did that for Devil May Cry 5? There was a $5,000 like, special edition where you got one of the jackets of the main characters. It, was, it wasn't like Fallout though, was it? You actually got the jacket. No, no, you actually you got, got the jacket. You get a plastic representation <laughs> of it. Yeah, can you imagine that? No, apparently the jacket was like um, uh, movie standard. It's like, this is what we'd use on like, if we made a Devil May Cry movie, this is what they'd put the main actor in. There's one I forgot though, and I can't believe I've done it. Leon Kennedy's jacket in Resident Evil 4. The jacket, that's so good. It is in all the promotional material and he loses it in the first hour of the game. Really? So, yeah, and what they did is they put in like an extra mode. It's like separate ways where you play as Ada Wong and you find the guy who steals his jacket. And I think in Resident Evil 6, they knew like that Leon Kennedy is now a fashion icon. So they actually released, again, a special edition where you could get Leon's jacket. 